So I've seen this image that I like in CivitAI.com and I want to copy it. So to do that, I'll just click on copy generation data, go back to stable diffusion, right click paste, and then press this button over here to put the parameters in the right place. And then just for this image to save time, I'm going to turn off the high res fix. This won't affect the actual image that much. It'll only affect the actual resolution of the image. And because the denoising strength wasn't that high to begin with, I should be getting a similar image, but just somewhat of a lower resolution. So I'm going to take that one off and then I'm going to click generate. And now comparing the image that I got with the image that is on CivitaAI.com, you can see there is a massive difference between the two. And the reason there's such a massive difference between what I and the person has produced is that this person is actually using a LoRa file within the actual prompt. Now, the easy way to think of LoRa files is as special add-ons that you can put on top of your model to change the actual art generation style of your actual image. And so what's happening with our generation is that even though we've actually referenced a LoRa file within our prompt, we haven't actually downloaded it onto our PC. And so when Stable Fusion is trying to generate the image, it is not able to find where the LoRa file is and therefore cannot generate the image correctly. And so going back to the image, luckily for us, the person has included a link to the actual LoRa file that he used. So this would be the waffle style. And then if I click on this and open this up in another page, now that I'm on the waffle style LoRa page, I'm able to get a sense of what this model is able to do. And if I actually scroll down to the gallery tab, I can see what the community was able to do using this actual LoRa file. And so scrolling back up before we actually download this LoRa file and use it within our model, there's one thing you want to pay attention to, and that's the trigger words. So right now there's only one trigger word, and that is waffle style. And going back to our image, you can see that they actually referenced the trigger word in the actual prompt itself. And that's sort of a general rule when using LoRa files is that you want to actually reference the LoRa file like this. So LoRa waffle style and then the weighting you want to give it and then the actual trigger word itself. And so back to the waffle style page, all you want to do is click on the download button here and start the download. Now, once that's downloaded, you want to go to where your stable diffusion is installed, go to models, LoRa, and then paste in the actual LoRa file here and restart your stable diffusion. Now back in Stable Diffusion, I have the prompt all set up again, and then I'm going to click Generate. And now looking at the image that was generated, it has a much stronger resemblance to the image that is found online than the image that we had before. And so in a nutshell, LoRa files are add-ons that you can use in Stable Diffusion to change the style of your generations. And if you go back to CivitAI.com and then filter by LoRa, you should be able to find a wide range of different LoRa's that you can use within your actual images. And so if you find that the image you're trying to copy references a LoRa that you're unfamiliar with, all I recommend is searching it on here and you should be able to find the LoRa that you're looking for.